An access control list is a mechanism that we might have in a file server or a router or firewall or any other type of infrastructure device that would restrict access from one place to the other. We're going to make sure that traffic can't move from one part of the network or one part of a server to another. You'll see these referred to as ACLs. Some people might abbreviate them ACLs. This means that we are assigning permissions to a particular object, and we are using them to restrict that access in a single file system, maybe across the network or through a firewall, maybe inside of an operating system. There's many different ways to implement an ACL. We can usually see it implemented in these types of ways. Maybe we want to allow Bob to read the files, but he can't do anything else to the files that might be on a file server. Maybe give access to the network to Fred, or maybe limit access to other people that may be going across the network. Here's an ACL that has a lot of different variables associated with it. James can access network 192.168.1.0 with a 24-bit subnet mask using TCP ports 80, 443, and 8088. That access control list would give me access to all of the devices that are on that 192.168.1.0 subnet, but only using port numbers 8443 and 8088. If I tried to use any other port number to access that network, I would not have permission based on that particular ACL. Over the network, we tend to implement access control lists in different ways. One common way, especially on wireless networks, is to implement an access control list based on your MAC address, your media access control address, your physical device itself. One challenge you have with managing things by MAC address is the device that looks at these MAC address has to be local to the devices themselves. You can't manage the MAC address of a device that's in another building or another country. They have to be on your local subnet. MAC addresses never leave the local subnet, so the only way to manage them is to be local to those devices. A very common way to administer ACLs is by IP address. You see IP addresses no matter where the traffic flows. So this might be done in a router. It might be done in a firewall. It's a great way to restrict who can go where on the network based on their source or their destination. Another way to restrict data through an ACL is something like a port number. Allow port 80 access to a web server. Allow port 443 to access a web server. This is very commonly used in firewalls to allow people access to certain services. And we would simply add in the port number that's associated with that service, and that allows or restricts traffic flowing through the network. Here's an example of an access list that you might see in a Cisco device. Cisco uses the term access list to designate this as an ACL, numbers it number one. And this ACL denies traffic that's coming from 172.16.5.2. And the numbers after that are a mask that you can associate to that so that you can make it for an entire subnet. In the case of 0, .0, 0.0.0, we're making it for just this IP address. So this ACL would deny access of anybody that's coming from that IP address. Same thing if you wanted to use a different IP address, same access list deny, and you would deny maybe 172.16.5.3. And let's say everybody else gets to go through the network. You would set up your access list to permit any. That would be a good example of how you can allow all traffic through the network. So your access list works in both ways. You can have an ACL to deny traffic and an ACL to allow traffic through. And you can have multiple ACLs in this list that you can then combine together to allow or disallow access to different resources on the network.